Welcome. We have our linear kinematics and our circular kinematics, and we just want to compile all of the connections between these in one table. So in linear kinematics, our definitions that we've started with is that our S is position, our V is the derivative of position with respect to time, we call that the velocity, and A, the derivative of velocity with respect to time, we call the acceleration. So over in circular, our definitions are that theta is angular position. Omega, which is d theta dt, is angular velocity. And alpha, which is d omega dt, is angular acceleration. So our connection between these is we can talk about our position along the tangential of the circular motion, the t, is equal to r times theta. This is our arc length equation. And then our other connections are that the velocity along the tangential direction is r omega, and the acceleration along the tangential direction is r alpha. So in our directions, we also can talk about i hat, which is the direction of increasing x, and j hat, which is the direction of increasing y. In circular motion, we instead define that r hat is the direction of increasing radius, and theta hat, or kind of our tangential hat, is increasing angle. We have a little bit of a hairy relationship between these, but our relationship is that r hat is equal to cosine theta i hat, plus sine theta j hat, and we have that theta hat is negative sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat. So we'll have other videos to kind of show how we got this, but this is just to show what is happening when this is happening. And then now that we have all this, we can start using relationships. Once we had this, then we have then that when our acceleration is constant, we get the kinematic equations. Vf equals Vi plus acceleration times time, and position F equals position I plus initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times squared. And over on the circular side, we have when our omega is constant, we get just a nice and easy omega is equal to 2 pi over t. Our connection between these two is our centripetal acceleration. which is that AR is equal to R omega squared, which is equal to V squared over R. We have one last possible category, but it's only for the circular part. So it's going to be a little bit ugly, but we can kind of be fine with that. And so at this point, right, if we go any more complicated than when out acceleration is constant, we don't have any more kinematics here, but we can ask when alpha is constant. And if we do that, then we get right our kinematic equations for circular motion, which is that omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times time. And we get theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial times time plus 1 half alpha t squared. 
So if alpha is constant, here be dragons over here. Don't worry about it. But everything else comes up nicely for this.